I've always been a city boy. Yeah, I went out of the city. I've lived in the cities long enough. Whenever you have a job, I have an acronym for job, which is just over broke. So having a business opened a lot of doors for me. I like clouds. Yeah, when they're like this, they're pretty cool, sir. Go Cherokee. All right, fuel, we'll leave it on the left tick. That's the fullest tank. Marshall traffic, have a Cherokee 6 on the RDAM 1-8. About uh, three miles now for final. It'll be a full stop, Marshall. Kansas City, 3620 Whiskey. Go ahead. 0 Whiskey, we got the runway in sight. We can cancel now. In November 3620 Whiskey, radar, or uh, IFR cancellation received, rather. Squawk VFR, change to advisory frequency approved. Have a good day. Thank you, 2-0 Whiskey. Have a great one. 500. Keep us climbing, okay? Um, all right then. And uh, watch the speed. Yeah, definitely don't let it, you know, I keep it around 100, okay? Oh boy, this ain't no simulator. No, it's not, son. Try to keep us in that magenta line right there, son, so a little more to the left. Okay, keep us right here and do not go in the clouds. Okay. Kansas City Center, good afternoon. Cherokee 3620 Whiskey. Keep us down, son. Keep us down. Don't climb. You're going to hit that cloud. Keep us down. Number 3620 or Juliet Whiskey, was it? 3620 Whiskey. Number 3620 Whiskey, you off the ground there at Marshall. That is affirmative, sir. I'd like to pick up that IFR over to Sierra Juliet Sierra. Number 3620 Whiskey, squawk 2136. 2136, 3620 Whiskey. 2136, son. Remember, 20 Whiskey, Roger, clear to the Sierra Julia Sierra Airport via Fog, Climbing Team 7000, Columbia Altimeter 2999. Remember, 3620 Whiskey, contact Mizzou Approach 124.37. 124.37, 3620 Whiskey. Mizzou approach, Saratoga 3620 Whiskey at 4000. Saratoga 3620 Whiskey, Mizzou approach, got tender 2999 in Columbia, and you're finding 67, correct? That is affirmative, 20 Whiskey. So since we're going to 7000, you can say uh, 4000, climbing to 7000, okay? That way he knows. Okay. So we're doing IFR now? Yes, son. Okay. All right, guys, welcome to Flying Dirty. So here we are in route to Kentucky. We're going to take a look at our property in Kentucky. Am I on the magenta line now? now? Pretty close, son. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. And here's Javier. Javier's been flying the airplane for quite a while. And okay. he's been doing a fabulous job. So we're at 7,000 feet, and he's been maintaining altitude precisely. And he's keeping us right on the magenta line. Which is our course. He's, he's been doing a great job. He's been flying now for what, over 30 minutes? Probably. Yeah, he's been doing really good. Very proud of him. And as we make our way to Kentucky, we're going to talk about, I've always been a city boy, but I went out. What about you, son? Uh, yeah. You were born in Dallas. 
you've always been a city boy. And I was born in Puerto Rico, in Ponce, Puerto Rico. Ponce is like the second largest city in Puerto Rico after San Juan. Puerto Rico is just a beautiful place and a beautiful island. And I'm very proud of my heritage, of being Puerto Rican and an American at the same time. So you get the best of both worlds. But <laughs> I've always been a city boy. I trimmed it perfectly, look. <laughs> We're not climbing or anything. Yep, see, that's how you do it. You're learning how to trim the airplane. I mean, look at that, he's right. It's 085 and it's just staying steady and he's not really doing anything to it. And that's what I told him to do is trim the airplane. Before I had an autopilot on this Cherokee 6, I used to always have to hand fly it and my autopilot was the trim. All right, so. Southwest 814, St. Louis, Radar, So my mother was uh, raised in the country and I've seen a lot of things in the country where, you know, uh, from hogs to chickens, they used to have a lot of chickens. So I used to go in the chicken coop and chase the chickens, but they had a big chicken coop. It was rather large with a lot of chickens in there. So they used to pick their own eggs and cook their own chickens and you name it, hogs and everything. So I have a little experience with that, not as much as I would have liked to. This is what you get from me now, a flying dirty shirt and some shorts, switch fuel tank and some shoes. That's what you're gonna get from me now. But I'm gonna tell you something, uh, yeah, I went out of the city, I've lived in the cities long enough. They already went out of the city. Yeah. We will be uh, transitioning slowly to the country, and I love it out there. And one thing about Eastern Kentucky, the times I've been there, it's always cloudy. And you can tell it's already getting cloudy up here. Look at this. And the airport in Kentucky, I really like it, son. What do you think about that airport in Kentucky? That airport is beautiful. Yeah, that airport is pretty awesome. I, I can see myself camping out over there. So that, uh, that airport is pretty nice. It, it's very nice. Number 62 Tango Lima, 10 miles from East Coast. Uh, very scenic. Approach. And, uh, but yeah, it, it's been always cloudy every time I go over there, so we always have to do a GPS approach. But it's, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. So I can't wait, guys. I, I'm excited. I'm very excited about this transition. I can't wait to uh, have this experience. And I tell you what, yeah, this city boy wants out. I want out. You? He wants out. Yeah. I know Isabel wants out. Mama wants out. Mama said she wants out. Mama said she wants out. Mama said she wants out. 62 Tango Lima contact. Uh, that sounds like a Tower Weird Al parody. Weird Al? Oh, Weird, Weird Al. Weird Al was very popular when Michael Jackson came out with Beat It. Just with, eat it. Uh, yeah, with, with Beat It and, uh, and I'm bad. Just eat it. Just eat it. Yeah, pretty pretty cool. I, I, I showed them some of those songs and they, uh, they love them. Yeah, so this uh, city boy went out. I want to go into the country. Wanna, time for me to relax. Have a less stressful life. And see, again, that's the beauty about having been a business owner. I've been a business owner for, gosh, business has been pretty much my life. I started recording and DJing when I was really young, maybe 16. When I was in high school, I was already DJing for school parties and things like that. And then I started uh, my recording stuff and doing music. And then I opened up the second largest recording studio in Northeast Florida. November 841 Kilo. And then I just kept on making businesses from there. Some worked, some didn't, but you know what? I never gave up, and now I've got several businesses that I run, including the restaurant, and here we are. So the, 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 the cool thing about having a business is that I was able to 
manage my finances. I had some pretty good jobs throughout my time. I did a lot of networking. I did security systems and things like that. I managed uh, a security business in, in Dallas and in, uh, in Denver, and I was a technician in Jacksonville. But whenever you have a job, job, I have an acronym for job, which is just over broke. And I think that's what a job is, just over broke. I, I could never really make enough money to do the things I really wanted to do. I just made enough money to pay the bills. And having your business, it gives you that extra room that you need to save money. So you, you save money and, and then you learn how to manage money. So I don't go crazy. And I've always stayed away from liabilities. And I tell you what, like I said, it's been a blessing because I've been able to do the things that I like. Even the businesses, I the businesses, I, the businesses that I own and have is because I, I just I love those kind of businesses. Uh, you know, printing shirts. I I just got into that because I wanted to sell shirts at the restaurant. So I'm like, well, why not buy me a shirt printer and print shirts and sell them at the restaurant? So I sell them at the restaurant. Then I wanted to get into embroidery. I wanted to embroider my own hats and my own apparel for my uh, for my workers at the restaurant. And here I am now doing things on the side for other people. And like I said, whenever I go to uh, different destinations, I leave a card, things of that nature, and people call me about, you know, doing things for them. So you just got to network. And I think that's just the beauty of, of having your own business. And this is my job, guys. So that's the thing about being a business owner. You get to uh, enjoy the things you want to do. Kansas so, having a business opened a lot of doors for me. I remember when I was working doing security systems and, you know, when I was a manager, I was making pretty good salary. I was making pretty good money. But boy, they worked me to death. Since I was salary, I would have to work on the weekends and forget it. My phone never stopped ringing. It was annoying. I wanted to spend time with my family. I used to love camping and stuff like that. And I, I couldn't because I couldn't relax. It was so stressful. Because every, you know, being a manager, every phone call you get, it's going to be a phone call about something bad happening. You got to fix it. You know, you, you got to put out the fires. It was so annoying. So a lot of people are so afraid to start businesses, and I tell you what, yeah, I was afraid, but I never looked back. It's been over 12 years now, over 12 years. And in those 12 years, my life has changed, okay? A lot of people tell you, oh, you know, businesses consume you. Yeah, they may consume you because you want to be consumed because you're doing something you enjoy and something you like. And whenever you're doing something you like, it's not a job. It's not. It's not work. Okay, you're not working. You're. You're, you're really. You. We want to be there because you love what you're doing. Unlike when you have a job, in most cases, you don't like what you're doing, and you're. You know, by the time five o'clock hits, you're ready to go. So having a business is really not like that. There may be exceptions to that because some people may start a business just because they want to start a business and, and maybe they want to do something they don't like. Well, you know, I don't know. That might be the same thing as having a job you don't like. But when you're doing things you like, like for example, guys, this is me. This is my business here. Here's my business right here. Flying around in this airplane and I'm making business deals. This is, this is, this is what I do. The joy of flying, I tell you. I'm able to now dictate what I want to do. So if I want to go to the country and relax, you know what I mean? I just go to, I just go to the country and relax. Uh, I've got three six two zero whiskey contact. Evansville approach one two seven point three five. One two seven point three five three six two zero whiskey. Good day. November three zero five Bravo. Evansville approach. This is Saratoga three six two zero whiskey at seven thousand. Two zero with Gibbs, we'll approach Evansville, we'll come here to 29 or 899. 29 or 899, or 362 is your whiskey. So, yeah, so that's the beauty. I'm glad that, uh, you know, that I had businesses. And you know what? This kiddo, he helps us in the business. Uh, I cut chicken, and I cut potatoes, and um, what was the other thing? Oh, 
I wash dishes and um, I cook sometimes, but I'm um, not like the best, so I don't really do the kitchen. Um, um, you take orders? Oh yeah, I do that too. Yeah. He's learning a lot, and Isabel is actually learning a lot, and and that's the beauty of having a family-owned business is that they all get to participate. And I believe that that is, wow, that, that's incredible skills that they're learning, okay? Social skills, customer service skills. I mean, these guys are learning how to, how to value their life, how to value money, how to value their finances, how to manage their finances, okay? How to manage a business. And, uh, and now we're ready to transition. So, again, you know, we've had enough of the city life, I think. I mean, with the things that I've seen, I mean, I... There was a time that I, I, I was fascinated with the city hustle. I, I really was. Uh, but you get so consumed in that mentality, and uh, I don't know, you start to, like your life is, is, is dictated by the hustle. And I'm a family guy, you know, like I, I do love the hustle, but I've also learned how to relax and how to enjoy and appreciate my family time and how to appreciate the time with him. Uh, that's the, the great thing about having a business is you can always be with your uh, children. And I really love that. But I'm going to always continue to thrive in something, okay? Because I'm just a hustler. I mean, that's what I do. And that's why I want an airplane and I needed an airplane because I want to hustle from point A to point B. That's what I do, baby. Now I got him. He'll be a pilot. Pretty soon I'll be in the back seat sleeping and snoring. Well, he takes me all over the nation. So anyway, that's what we're doing, guys. Man, I'm pretty excited. We're gonna have some pretty cool stuff, pretty cool series. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't wait to make videos about me driving to uh, Kentucky. Like I said, it's gonna be a slow process because, you know, we we still have ties and businesses uh, in Denver, so we just can't up and leave. But in the meantime, I'll be transitioning, getting everything situated. We'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully, I won't get tired of it, but I, I, I really don't think so. I, matter of fact, if, if anything, I'll get tired of uh, living in Denver. Every time I have to stop at a red light, boy, I get frustrated. And it seems like all the lights are out to get me. I'm telling you, I, I've got like like this sensor in my vehicle that detects all the lights detect when I'm when I'm coming. And as soon as I approach the light, bam, it turns red telling you they're out to get me that's it you know this city boy wants out how many of you want out of the city talk to me how many of you i know a lot of country folks and let me tell you something they're happy they're happy with what they got in the city man you become so materialistic that it's ridiculous you know you know i worship god that's what i worship i don't worship material stuff and it seems like nowadays that's what people are doing is worshiping the new iPhone 14X. That's pretty much it. But, uh, yeah, guys, what do you think? I mean, do you want out of the cities, too? You do. We got hammocks. I mean, you know, I'm prepared, man. Like, I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got my solar cells. I got all kinds of stuff. Like, I've been buying them years ago, waiting for this opportunity and for this moment. We sort of knew we were going to do it. It was just a matter of finding the right place. We, we found a couple of places, but we, we, we went to look at them. We didn't like them. This is our second property that we looked in Kentucky. We, we looked at a lot of them online, and we were interested in, in a few. But again, with this crazy market, people were putting offers left and right. But on these properties, I got pretty lucky because the market has kind of changed now. When they, whenever they put a house up, if it's a decent home with acreage, it'll be gone in like a week. Okay, it won't. It would not last five days. I can tell you that right now. So a lot of people, what they're doing is they're selling their homes in the cities and they're moving to the country. They went out just like me. They went out. They're done with the city. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff going around, guys. I don't know if you can smell it in the air, but I don't have a good feeling about what's going to happen here in the next few years. So it's always good to be prepared as well. Have an option B. So anyway, guys, thank you for joining us. We're excited. We got, we got a lot of more things coming. This channel is for aviation enthusiastics, but it is also for non-aviation enthusiastics because now we're going to combine it probably with a homestead. I don't know if we're going to open a new homestead channel or 
me being in the country. I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't know if I'm going to interlink them together. I, I don't know yet. But I just know that I want to be in those woods, man, and doing my own thing with the hammock in those trees and chopping trees down. Man, I can't wait. It's going to be a heck of an experience. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so I can keep you guys updated on what's going to happen next. I'm going to leave you guys with a few clips of the next episode and you don't want to miss it. As of this video, the channel is approaching 8,000 subscribers. Thank you all very much. So make sure you like, subscribe, and leave me a comment to keep the channel going and to keep me motivated. From the Rockies to the Appalachians, go figure. That's pretty cool. We're not doing so bad in the Cherokee 6 actually. Look at this. We're doing almost Saratoga speeds there, 181. Now we're going to talk about why having airplanes have been so beneficial. Can you think of a few, son? All right, we got the mixture, we got the prop, we got rain. Oh, man, look at the scenery, son. Very nice. Doing an approach with a lot of rain. Oh, my goodness. That's not bueno. Just picked up lightning.